All right, welcome to the compositing part of this course. And uh, in this section, we'll look at how to combine the rendered, um, the renders that are coming from Houdini uh, with a play. But first, let's get started with looking at exactly what we have to work with. So we'll start with a plate here uh, in Nuke. If you don't have Nuke open, this would be the moment to open it. Uh, let's open up Nuke and let's navigate to the BHK10 directory. As you can see here in this directory, we have a number of subdirectories. And the ones that we're going to be diving into are plates and also the render directory. But we'll start with plates. In there, you will have two elements one which is the original plate uh, as it was uh, as we got it from sony and then we have the undistorted plate which was used uh, in the viewport in houdini but that's not the element that we'll be working with so we're going to go into the bhk 010 mpv001 mp stands for main plate and as we dive in here we'll see two file sequences uh, one is jpeg uh, and it was generated just so if you want to play back and you don't have much memory you can use that, but in our case here, we'll be working with the EXR, Extended Dynamic Range uh, File Format. And to load that in, we'll select that and click Open. So the very first time that you bring in a read node into Nuke, uh, it will just show you a thumbnail. Uh, we need to set up Nuke to work properly with uh, this project. And we'll start by looking at the frame range. Uh, we'll change the frame range to match the the, the frame range that we have for our renders. And we'll also look at other little settings here. So let's start by putting our mouse over the gray area here of the node graph and S for settings. You will see a number of tabs here in the project settings. We are mostly interested uh, how the color management is going to be set up for this project. So in my nuke here, I have everything already set up to work with ACES. You would select OCIO in the color management. And as you can see here, my uh, nuke here is actually grayed out because I am using a environment variable to use the ACES color management. But in your case, click in this OCIO config drop down menu and you will choose ACES 1.2. Everything else in here, you can leave as is. Uh, and we are going to be using the rec.709 as a viewing lot. Now, the second thing we want to take care of is setting up the frame range. The actual frame range for our project is going to be 1280 to 1500. So here we're going to set the frame range properly. So 1280 to 1500. And the next thing that we want to check is that we are working at a correct resolution. In our case here, the resolution is HD 1080, 1920 by 1080. So we we'll select that. If you don't have that selected, make sure that you do by selecting the read node, we can hit one on our keyboard to visualize that. And let's go now to the very first frame by clicking on the go to start button here in the uh, timeline. Uh, by pressing the space bar here, I can uh, make the rest of my interface go away. So place the mouse in the picture area in the viewer, press the space bar, and then you might want to hit F to fit the view to the available uh, screen real estate here. If you look very closely, I'm zooming in, you know, I'm using the middle mouse button, the middle uh, wheel, and I'm zooming in. You'll notice that this image is very, very noisy. Uh, there's a reason for that. It was actually filmed on 35 millimeter film. And this particular stock that was used uh, is indeed fairly noisy. And you can even uh, notice here and there some, uh, some dust visible. Uh, and they register as little white dot, white uh, specks in the image. Well, that's just the nature of film. This shot has not been dust busted, meaning we haven't removed uh, all the little artifacts. But nevertheless, you know, observing very carefully what the image is made of is also a very important step as you assemble computer generated images with live action. Well, you need to really analyze and understand what's going on in the image. This plate was licensed as is, so we have very little in terms of information. In fact, we don't even have an HDRI. So we've had to guesstimate the lighting. We've had to guesstimate where the lens is when we did the camera track. So let's get started now by bringing in the rest of the uh, CG elements. 
As we navigate to our BHK0010, we're going to go into the render directory. And inside of that, our FX subdirectory, which contains all the render passes that we've made from Houdini. And I will click and drag and drop these folders inside of Nuke. We'll end up with a bunch of read nodes. And we can select them all and hit L for layout on our keyboard. And then we'll rearrange all of that and make it clean before we get started. There are two kinds of elements that we are going to be working with. So we have static elements such as the building. So this is a render of the proxy, uh, proxy geo. So I'll select that, hit one, and you can see here, this is basically a, a static element rendered through the camera. We also have something similar to this, which is the ground separate element. So it's just a ground all by itself. So again, this is the proxy ground. So we have a number of additional elements that are uh, moving that are animated. So we have, for example, the helicopter, which is a solid object. We also have elements that are the result of simulations. So you can see here some smoke, uh, that is the ground pieces dust. We also have effects explosion. And then we have a third one here. We have another fourth element of smoke. This is the, the dust that's coming from the helicopter when it's, uh, flying above ground. We have an RPG render, so we have two frames. If you if we click on the little folder here, it's going to take us to the actual folder which contains the renders. So we have the RPG, FX RPG V001, and you can see it's two frames, 1429, 1430. As I view this uh, read node and navigate through the uh, timeline, you can see that it's visible the entire time. Uh, before the first frame, before 1429, but it's also visible the entire time after 1430. And if you can't really see this in the recording, let me make this a little bit more visible by pushing the exposure in the viewer. So technically, we should only see this visible in the viewport at 1429 and 1430. And to make sure this happens, we're going to set the frame range here. You can see the first frame right after, instead of holding the frame, we're going to say block. So if, you know, before 1429, it's going to be black. Okay. And at 1429, it's just going to appear in the viewport. Boom. That's exactly what we want. And after 1430, instead of holding the frame visible, we're going to set that to black as well. So we have our RPG here. And we also have the effects utility pass. Uh, that is something we, we will use. And I'll show you how to use this and to actually see what this utility pass contains, right? I'm selecting this pass, hitting one. If you try to view it, it looks like it's a very bad render, but we have more than RGB, red, green, and blue values here in the image. If you will observe carefully, you'll see at the very bottom, we have red, green, blue, alpha, and then we have something else here. And then we have something else here. You can see these extra little patches that indicate that there's something else beyond your typical red, green, blue, alpha in the read node. And in order, in order for us to really determine what that is, let's select this node and hit tab and type layer, layer contact sheet. And we're going to attach that to our read node here. So we have a depth pass. We have a N for normals pass. And we also have a position pass. So these are basically additional AOVs that we get from uh, the render. So we also have AOV fire and uh, AOV scatter, even though they are in this uh, render, we can see that the, the, those AOVs are empty. So I wouldn't worry about, you know, what they're for. They're basically there, but they're, they're not really active. Okay. We'll be using this to give a little bit, to have a little bit more control over the uh, color of the helicopter at a later stage. We'll most likely uh, be using the normal pass for that. All right, so now that we have roughly, very loosely separated things, we're gonna start cleaning things up and assembling things in a logical manner. The first step is going to occur with these two guys here. So I'll put them, you know, slightly below, and then I'll carry on like that. So next to that, so these two renders here, the building and the ground, uh, we're going to use both of them to isolate, as you can see, the renders uh, for the shadows, they are in two passes. So it looks a little bit noisy. It's okay. We only need some values from these two passes. 
but we need to cut one by the other and we'll need to use some of these two elements here in order to essentially trim what you what you want to keep and get rid of the rest that you don't need for example here this shadow pass this ground shadow pass you can see part of it is going straight into the building well we don't need to shadow the inside of the building we just need to shadow the front of the building which we have a pass for a rendered shadow for right here okay so we'll put these two things next to each other well the next thing is going to be any uh, helicopter dust that is that is generated by the uh, downdraft uh, from the helicopter. So that's going to be on top. We're going to put this right here. You can see I'm starting to form a bit of a logical arrangement here. Now that we have made this layout of our nodes, it would be a good time to, to do this first save for our script here. So we're going to go to File, Save Comp, navigate to our BHK10 directory, and we'll go to the Comp directory. And you'll see I already saved my script here as the HK010 comp v001. I suggest that you do the same thing and call it that if you want to save it as version one. So I'll just make sure that uh, later on, as I keep working on my script, I can version up version two, version, version three, four, five, as you improve and add more uh, more elements to your script, you'll, you're going to be versioning up. Okay, so let's call this BHK comp version 001. And another really good thing to do, in, in, instead of just naming it like that, you can also take the opportunity of putting your name. For example, here, I could call it BHK. So that's the shot number. That's a shot name. Then the next word is the discipline. Here, it's compositing, so comp. And then it's the artist name meaning me, Kareem, and here the version number. So this is a very standardized way of working in the industry where we can easily, just by looking at a file, know what it is and who created it and how far along it is by looking at simply the version number.